Come along with us and learn how to renew your worn out dining table with Stone Coat Epoxy. Using five epoxy color additives and art coat, I pour this earth tone sediment stone out of a bucket and it comes to life. This project and color recipe was fun and really simple. On this epoxy journey, you will learn step by step how to permanently install the table leaf you never remove. Prep a damaged surface, mix and pour your countertop right out of a bucket. Stone Coat Epoxy does the hard work for you. You can match anything. I'm gonna use colors from my tile floors, granite countertops, and a splash of my wife's blue draperies. I'll show you how to keep your table looking like the day you poured for many years to come with the ultimate top coat. Buckle up, folks. This project turns out amazing. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. While we're loading up, if you haven't already, help us grow. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, get notified of all our new videos. All right, let the transformation begin. That is beat up. I cannot wait to see this thing all fixed up. Step one, clean the project with TSP. Following the manufacturer's instructions, I diluted the TSP concentrate with warm water and misted the project heavily to remove the grease and grime before sanding. I've never removed this leaf. I'm gonna take it apart, clean it. Then I'm gonna glue it back together like it never existed. Oh yeah. Gross, it's cleaning time. Our dining table fits our family perfectly with a table leaf installed and we never remove it. My wife has always wished it was never there and the steps to permanently installing it are simple to follow. Step one is the most important, clean between the leaf thoroughly before sanding. Nothing likes to stick to grease and grime. All right, step two, rough up and sand the surface and between the table leaf with 220 grit sandpaper. Scratched and beat up, my table still had a lacquer finish and you will need to rough up any lacquer to create a mechanical bond. Clean the surface one more time with TSP. To permanently install my table leaf, I'm going to use Quick Coat. Quick Coat is a fast drying epoxy one to one ratio. You mix for two minutes with a paddle mixer. You gotta work quick. It sets up in about 15 to 20 minutes. To extend Quick Coat's working time, mix and then quickly remove out of the bucket. Woodworkers love the Quick Coat because they can fill gaps and seams. You can seal coat those edges before pouring that river. Mix small batches at a time if working with mini table leaves. Start by pouring part B first, then part A at a one to one ratio by volume. Mix for two minutes with a paddle mixer. Add Stone Coat's epoxy thickener to achieve desired level of thickness, usually 5% by weight of mixed epoxy. Mix again for another minute and now you're ready to go. Pour that epoxy out of the bucket to keep it from setting off prematurely. Here I am using a Bondo spreader to get the thickened quick coat in both sides of the table leaf. I made sure to cover the floor to catch any drips and use your Bondo spreader to remove any excess quick coat before it dries for easier sanding. Two, three. Perfect, that'll work. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm gonna let this quick coat dry. I'll be back in about an hour and a half to two hours to sand and then apply the epoxy undercoat. The quick coat is dry and we are ready to sand and make this table nice and smooth. I started sanding the tabletop with 120 grit sandpaper to rough up any glossy lacquer and smooth out the collateral damage left behind by my pack of suns. I sanded the edge back smooth to remove the quick coat that squished out the front edge. The top edge of my table is sharp. I will use an eighth inch roundover bit on my trim router to roll that top edge. This will encourage the epoxy to flow over evenly for nice, smooth, and beautiful epoxy edges. Finish off sanding the project with 220 grit. You do not need to be perfectly smooth here. The epoxy will overcome pits, knots, and scars. All right, my leaf is permanently installed. It is now time for two coats of epoxy undercoat in whatever color you choose. I'm going with white for this project. 
Stone Coat's epoxy undercoat applies easily, is ammonia free, and each can will cover over 40 square feet. This stuff dries quickly so you can get to pour an epoxy. We offer two colors of undercoat, white and black. All right, the first coat is dry. Now I'm gonna sand with 220 grit and apply one more coat. All right, folks, my dining table is prepped and ready to pour. I cleaned the grease and grime from in between that table leaf. I permanently installed it with quick coat. I sanded my project. I applied two coats of epoxy undercoat in white. And before I go messing this up, I'm gonna create a small sample piece, take a picture, send it to my beautiful wife, get her stamp of approval, and then I'm off to the races. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, folks, question of the day. What will you do with these table legs? Paint them, good work. stain them, or figure out something to do on Pinterest? The table legs are in pretty good shape, so I wanna make sure to keep the epoxy drips off. I'm using delicate release tape and painter's plastic. If you are pouring new countertops over your worn out tops in place, you'll wanna prep the cabinets the same way. During the winter months, to help with mixing and air bubble release, warm the epoxy bottles in front of a space heater for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, guys, I made this sample. It's nice and dry. I'm gonna get my wife on the phone, make sure she likes it before I proceed with my table. All right, I can hear you. You wanna see the piece? Yeah. All right, hold on, I'm gonna switch it around. All right, what do you Ooh, think? It's beautiful. There's a Recipe approved. We're off to the races. It's time to mix. Art Coat is a one-to-one -one ratio epoxy by volume, not weight. I'm going to mix up this kit, divide it into mixing cups, tint that epoxy individually, pour it back into the mixing bucket, and now you're ready to pour your countertop right out of that bucket. Start with part B, then pour in part A at a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not weight, then mix for two minutes with the paddle mixer. Keep from rubbing the bottom and sides while going full speed. While Luke's mixing, I'm gonna tape the edges to keep my exotic pour from pouring over the edges prematurely. The tape dam is an optional step, but really gives you some outstanding effects. All right, this recipe is gonna be white, brown, a little bit of blue earth, some copper, and a touch of diamond dust. Go time. It's go time. It's time to divide up your mixed art coat into separate mixing cups. I'm going to use our exotic pour technique for this project. Exotic pours are super simple, perfect for beginners or the epoxy pro because of the realistic head turning countertops created just by using a couple of liquid epoxy dyes and metallic powders together. A little brown. I chose Blue Earth, why? Because it's an awesome color and it's gonna match my floor tiles really well. A little bit goes a long way. Each 15 gram vivid metallic powder will completely tint a full two gallon kit of epoxy. Our liquid epoxy dyes are extremely color fast and only a few drops are needed to tint the epoxy. All right, the epoxy's tinted. It's now time to put all this tinted epoxy back into your mixing bucket. Building the exotic pour bucket is so satisfying. I get pumped up every time anticipating how the countertop will come out. Just randomly add the tinted epoxy back into the larger mixing bucket. Another technique that can up level your exotic pour is slowly apply this epoxy down the side of that bucket. That keeps the epoxy from over mixing and can really give you some vivid, contrasting, natural looking veins. Check it out. Whoa. Using this technique with an exotic pour gives you that striated stacked sediment look you can find out in mother nature. That looks epic. It sure does. <laughs> I would say doing this little technique was the best happy accident, as Mike would say, I've ever had. The one rule to follow with an exotic pour is don't take a mixing stick and mix up that big bucket before pouring it out on your countertop.
Here comes the fun part. In any pattern you choose, slowly pour out your larger mixing bucket onto your project. I'm looking for the stacked sediment look, so I'll pour my bucket back and forth. Because this is a dining table, I can lift and tilt this project for some seriously realistic looking effects. If you cannot lift or tilt your project, don't worry, you can still get these effects, letting the epoxy self-level and using a heat gun to move and meld the epoxy. Hey folks, if you have a dining table that's seen better days, we've done the hard work for you. We've put together everything you need from Stone Coat Countertops to accomplish this project in your own home. Follow along with Mike, follow on our how-to video, or print out our step-by-step -step PDF. Jump on over to our website after the video and grab your dining table repair kit with Stone Coat Epoxy. Now, back to the video. All right, I'm gonna use a propane torch to remove some air, warm this epoxy up, and tilt this project around. Hold the propane torch or heat gun a couple inches from the surface of the epoxy. In a sweeping motion, warm and pop the air bubbles incorporated into the epoxy while mixing. Warm the leading edge of the epoxy in the direction you intend to tilt your project. Let gravity do the hard work for you. I really like how the epoxy will flow naturally and randomly, leaving you with a great looking realistic countertop. Look at that project come to life. Now I'm going to warm the opposite side and tilt the project in the other direction. I'm absolutely loving how this project is turning out. I'm gonna peel this tape. I let the epoxy sit for a good 20 minutes before I pulled the tape. Peel the tape away from the project in a downward motion. This helps the epoxy flow evenly over the edges. Here I am using the leftover exotic pour epoxy to pour smaller, contrasting, vibrant veins. Then I'll give the table a tilt for a final perfect finishing touch. Use your gloved hand to break up any surface tension or any missed areas on your edges. I love how subtle and beautiful these colors melded together. Now with a propane torch, hold it a couple inches from the surface, sweep the entire project overlapping your flames so you don't miss any bubbles. A torch or heat gun will remove the air bubbles incorporated into the epoxy while mixing. That table is looking mighty fine. If I could say so myself, my wife is gonna be very pleased. I'm going to let this project cure overnight, come back tomorrow and apply a clear coat of epoxy for depth and durability. Hey folks, I'm back. It's the next day. I'm gonna sand this beautiful tabletop I created last night with 220 grit sandpaper, clean the dust with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I'm using Art Coat as my clear coat to add durability and extreme UV resistance. Art Coat's UV resistance is second to none. Art Coat is a one-to-one -one epoxy by volume, not weight, and you mix for two minutes with a paddle mixer. Be sure to hold the bucket and keep the paddle mixer from scraping the bottom and sides. All right, step one, lightly sand with 220 grit sandpaper. You can use a random orbital sander or a sanding block. Both work just the same. All 
I like to remove my sanding pad off the backer to hit the edges so I don't over sand. After a quick sanding, clean the top with the paper towels and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. All right, we're ready to mix epoxy. Clear coat is the name of the game and the tools needed are propane torch, chop brush, eighth inch by eighth inch, square notch trowel, and a little bit of epoxy. For clear coat, you need three ounces per square foot. This is 25 square feet, plus my apron gives me about 30 to 35. I'm gonna mix up 96 ounces of epoxy. So pour your epoxy mixture into the center of your project. I like to mix the epoxy one more time here in a big center mass. That's why I like to pour it in the center. And then you just walk it over to the edge, keeping the epoxy away from the edge till it's nice and evenly distributed across the project. That thing looks good with a clear coat on it. All right, the project has been troweled. It's time to chop. I pre-prime by dipping in some mixed epoxy. In a random pattern, just chop your entire project. Use the heel of the brush, and just don't do rows, go randomly. What this does, it eliminates the trowel lines left behind, and it mixes the epoxy one more time. We mix in a bucket, we mixed with the trowel, and now we're mixing one more time with this chop brush. Final step will be to Torch the project with a propane torch or a heat gun. Torch will quickly remove any air incorporated while mixing or chopping. All right, as you can see, we're full of air bubbles, but don't worry, the propane torch or heat gun quickly eliminates all that air. Take your time and do a thorough job sweeping the project with that propane torch to eliminate the air incorporated while mixing for that perfect glass-like finish. So I'll let this project sit a couple minutes, come back and do that same process a couple more times. Use the reflection from the lights above to help you find any areas you may have missed with that torch. When all the air bubbles have been removed, let the epoxy cure overnight. I'm coming back tomorrow to apply the ultimate top coat. We're back, it's the next day. My flood coat is dry. This table is pretty much ready for install, but I'm gonna take it up another notch. I'm gonna install the ultimate top coat because I have four young sons and y'all know how this table looked before I applied the stone coat. Before prepping the countertop for the ultimate top coat, I'm going to de-prep the plastic that protected my legs as I poured the epoxy. After removing the plastic, lightly sand the surface and edges with 220 grit sandpaper for a mechanical bond of the top coat. To apply the ultimate top coat, we use the two roller method, one wet and one dry. Step one, de-lint those rollers. Masking tape makes quick work of de-linting your roller. All right, it's time to mix up the ultimate top coat. Step one, it's important to shake up part A before mixing in with part B. There's a matting agent that likes to settle, so give it a quick little shake and you're off to the races. Each ultimate top coat kit will cover 40 to 50 square feet. I'm working with about 25 to 30, so I'm gonna mix up about half of my kit. Remember, the top coat is a two to one mixture, so two parts A followed by one part B. Mix with a mixing stick for a couple minutes, then we're gonna add a dash of water. Adding water really helps thin to the consistency to make it easy to apply. I add a little bit more than a capful, but do not exceed 2% by volume. We designed the ultimate top coat to dry quickly so you can get back to using your kitchen. Now time to add a dash of water. Mix one more time. Once you've achieved your optimal consistency, pour that mixture into your paint tray 
and it's time to wet roll. Set one roller aside, that will be your dry roller. I saturate my roller completely in the top coat, roll some of it off, and then take that material right to the center, and then that's gonna be my reservoir as I feather out the top coat onto my project. If you start running low on your top coat reservoir, re-wet your roller and then evenly spread the rest of the material over the project. What we're looking for is a nice, even, consistent coating before we go to dry roll. Now using the dry roller and with applying pressure to the frame of the roller, lightly dry roll the top coat. There's no need to dry roll more than once and don't be alarmed if there are any subtle lap lines remaining after dry rolling. The top coat tightens up as it dries and becomes crystal clear. All right, the ultimate top coat is as simple as that. I'm gonna let this dry. It's gonna be dry to the touch in four to five hours and ready for kitchen use the next day. Okay, man, what do you think? Dude, you did an amazing job. I think it'll stand up to your boys. We, my four sons will put this thing to the test. I'm excited. We're gonna load it up in Mike's truck and then take it on to, to my wife okay. and kids. It's gonna be awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we'll go up like that. We've got a quick five minute drive to my house. Mike won't even know I borrowed his truck until he watches the video. All right. I love what do you it. think? It goes such a good in here, right? Beautiful. What do you think? Absolutely awesome. Yes. I can't believe this is our kitchen table. John, what do you think? What's your favorite part? This part. This part right here? That is pretty cool, I agree. Operation Upgrade My Dining Table Mission Successful. We hope you enjoyed this video, and from all of us here at Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got, got this. this. We'll see you on the next video. You get down. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. Jump on over to stonecoatkennertops.com to find everything used in this video. You got this. <laughs>